Hello, this is Don Whitaker with the third developer diary from my breeders game simulation. Uh, but before I get into what I've been working on this week, I just wanted to say thanks to everybody who's come by the site. Uh, especially want to say thanks to Red Suit over on Reddit. He posted a link to my first dev diary video on the re the gaming subreddit. And I've got a ton of people coming over. 15,000 people watched the video in just a couple of days and got all kinds of great ideas and feedback and uh, encouragement from people all over the web. It was it was really fun for me and it was really nice to know that so many people are interested in a game or a simulation like this and that uh, they're excited enough to offer feedback. Uh, even on YouTube, um, the thing is full of positive comments, which is a rare thing on YouTube if you spend any time there at all. So I'm really excited about all the great ideas. I gathered up most of them that I, and put my favorites into the mind map that you can get to on the site. Um, great stuff. I, sp I put my favorites on here, but I've been keeping in mind everything that everybody's said. Um, lots of people asked to add evolution to the game, which is something that's definitely coming and I've been thinking a lot about. Um, two of the, there's several people suggested a survival kind of adventure mode where you kind of have to live off the land by gathering resources and fighting off the creatures which was a great idea and then um, Hopkins John had a, a, a similar suggestion that involved basically being one of the creatures in the simulation and protecting your offspring and choosing a desirable mate and things like that and those two suggestions just kind of blew my mind because it was it was a great idea and it was a perfect way excuse me, it's the perfect way to uh, it's the perfect way to get the player into the game and experience the sim. I've been thinking of a way to gamify it and those suggestions just really kind of opened up oh. that an ambulance go by or something <laughs> but uh, those suggestions really kind of blew my mind you know they really opened up some ideas I could have for how I would make this into a game I love the idea of being a part of the simulation and choosing mates and affecting the way your creature evolves when I can get evolution as a part of it so those are really spark some really great ideas for me and all kinds of other great ideas about different creatures uh, people lots of people suggested weather effects and environmental effects which I think would be really good, like hot or cold areas or water that would attract or uh, repel different creatures. Um, great ideas for creatures, like a couple of ones for the uh, amoeba. Like Harry suggested they could start life very small and only eat seeds and plants and then start eating creatures and divide. Uh, another, I think he was Kotki, Leo one, Kot flying one, Kotki, that suggested that the amoebas could uh, fight each other if they got too close to each other to kind of control their numbers which I think is a great idea. I might combine those two into one one new sort of amoeba. Just all sorts of ideas. If you go to the mind map on my site you can see my favorites. And it's really been great. It's really helped me decide how I should go forward with the game, what people are interested in, and uh, really opened up a whole new concept from the game because I was coming at it from a different angle and all these people said you know they come at it with these new ideas and it's like aha I could do I can do that and I think I can do a lot of the ideas that I have I'm not the greatest coder but I I think I've figured out a, a way I can simulate evolution and some of these other ideas so I'm pretty excited about the future of this project so let me go ahead and uh, load up fraps so I can show you what I've been doing in the in the game All right, I got Unity loaded up. I got the current version of Breeders, and let's see. This week I worked on a couple of new critters. My favorite one are these Sprinters, kind of based after a cheetah, and they have a home base. Oops. Whenever they spawn, they choose a home base, and then they sit there in the area and gather up energy until they hit um, a threshold. And then they choose a herder, they're a predator, and 
they go after that herder in hopes of eating it and if they do they get to make a seed so this guy's going after the herder and they, the sprinting takes a lot of energy you can see he's getting smaller as he sprints oh we got him planted a seed and uh, actually he died because he was so oh no there he goes Oh, he might have died. He was so low on energy that he died. But this one is low on energy, and he's going back to the home base. When they get low, they go back to their home base and gather up energy for the next sprint. And the herders really have no defense against them right now, or no sensor to know if a predator's by. But if they do hit a predator, it causes them to lose a bunch of energy. So if he gets hit a bunch of times, here he goes into a big group probably have a little more trouble this time they get hit a bunch of times they can die or just get low enough on energy that they have to go back home I just finished I just made these today and yesterday so I haven't kind of fine-tuned it yet that one died too let's make another one it's interesting that even without a, uh, a sense of predators that these uh, herders kind of have a defense just by wearing out those <laughs> these sprinters. I also make these coral cactus over here that uh, kind of gather up energy like a tree and grow slowly and then uh, about halfway through their lifespan they stop and start producing uh, catalysts that get caught up in the branches up in there and the herders and other creatures can sometimes have a little bit of trouble getting them because they get caught up up here in the branches. And they spread around like the 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 blooming mushrooms here. They're kind of free roaming around the landscape. I do want to add some reaction by the herders to the predators, like some sort of sense that if they see a predator nearby that they'll try to run away at least or if they see one of their friends die that they'll run away that's probably next on my list for critter behaviors um, so here goes another here comes another wild kingdom sprint across the plains as the wild sprinter tracks down his prey <laughs> oh he's running out of energy I don't know if he's gonna get him oh he got him so they spawn a seed Spawning seeds takes energy, so sometimes it can kill them, it looks like. I might have to fine-tune that a little bit. shouldn't kill them so often. They've done pretty well without having any other breeding instincts. The only time they get to spawn a seed is when they eat a herder. This guy's tired, headed back home. Uh, I also spend a lot of time learning and playing with the texturing tools in Unity. Some really nice terraforming and texture painting and even these grasses you see are all painted on the landscape and the grasses disappear when they're off in the distance so as not to affect the graphics performance you can see them coming into view there and if you're careful and uh, I made some new alpha map plants and if you're careful and lay everything on nice you can get some really great landscaping effects without affecting the performance too much I added a lot a lot of this grass and stuff and there's eight textures layered all over this landscape So I'm pretty happy with how things went this week. I spent some time cleaning up the code and organizing things too because uh, very soon now I'm going to release the entire Unity 3D project so that you can grab Unity, which is free, and grab this and drag and drop a bunch of these critters into a new scene and make your own um, levels. And also it's, it's very easy in Unity to change the variables the way I've got them set up so that you can change how much energy they have and um, how long they live and things like that without even knowing how to code so it'll be kind of a stopgap until I can figure out how uh, a better way for people to adjust things in the game and I'm kind of at a point now where I need to uh, firm up the ideas for uh, what might be a real game here instead of just this toying around with the, uh, the ideas um, so that'll be a good holdover for people to tinker with while I work on the next step and add evolution the next evolution of breeders <laughs> had evolution and a, a, a more uh, 
open framework for all of these ideas I have for behaviors. I think I've got a system of variables and uh, preferences that I can use to evolve the creature's behaviors in an interesting way. Uh, at least I hope so. I'm going to try that. That's that's After I get this sandbox version cleaned up, I'll start working on a, a next version of the game. There'll also be um, the pay-what-you-want downloadable versions for the PC and Mac because I'm using Unity I can I can um, have it build versions for the PC and Mac so you can play it without using a web browser and I'm gonna use the pay what you want model because I really like um, when people create things and share it and then just uh, kinda ask for money if people like it I love the pay what you want model or the Creative Commons and the donation model so I'm gonna use that for my own game I already use it on most of my other creations um, I think that's all I've added to the simulation this week. Mostly, I spent too much time on the landscape because <laughs> I oh I love landscaping, the virtual landscapes, and making plants and stuff. I spent a lot of time doing that in Second Life. I spent many years in there, landscaping, goofing around. So thanks again for all the feedback, people. I I really love it. I, I, it was really awesome to get. Uh, to know that there are people interested in stuff like this and that they're excited enough to offer feedback and offer help. I've got people ask, offering to make art assets and things, so I'm going to be adding stuff to the uh, page of the site where I can kind of post up, oh, here we need, if we had some low-poly trees and rocks or certain kind of textures for a level I'm working on or whatever, that people who are interested could go ahead and contribute that. Or after I release the, um, the Unity project, people could even make whole levels and uh, I could include those in a future build of the game. So uh, I just realized I forgot to tell you about the new camera controls, and there's a few more keys now. Um, you can now use uh, 1 through 7 to spawn various critters. Number 6 is the Katamari, and 7 is the, uh, the Sprinter, or the Cheetah. Remember, wherever you're standing when you spawn that Cheetah, that's going to be its home base, so... That first one I spawned, his home base, he's trying to get up that big hill right now. <laughs> Poor guy won't make it. Um, I also added some camera height controls just to give a different, better view. Uh, if you hit the C key, you can camo toggle between three camera heights. Although this high one is making me seasick. i got to change how it works. It's kind of like a camera on a 30-foot pole. and. It makes me woozy if I move around too fast on it. <laughs> um, I also added uh, two different modes for the mouse. The default mode is like auto aim that the the camera always follows your mouse. But if you press shift, it toggles it into it frees up your mouse, and then the camera only moves when you hold down the right mouse button. So that's familiar to a lot of people who play some MMOs. Or um, it also frees up the mouse in case. Later, we need to click on things for the interface and whatnot. Um, oh, and also fireballs. <laughs> One of the first uh, pieces of feedback I got was someone was asking for fireballs and a way to destroy stuff, so I've added those in. If they hit something directly in the scene, they'll destroy it and take it out of the scene. Otherwise, they just cause a kind of a force explosion, so... You can load all those up. <laughs> Cause a little destruction. I got a level in the works. It's kind of a physics playground. It's going to be a lot of fun. Doesn't really have anything to do with this game, but uh, who doesn't have fun blowing up barrels and stacks of cubes? <laughs> I got a couple other levels in the works that I worked on this week that is not ready to show off yet. But uh, there's the new camera controls. So, yeah, I guess that's it for now. Thanks for watching Dev Diary number three. Check out breedersgame.com and my YouTube channel for more videos, and uh, see you next time. Bye.